So, someone left a link to a page that's attempting to prove Illuminati confirmed with Mark Steele. Not really, but let's just use that one for the lead statement here in the first 10 seconds. So, anyway. Um, I said before that uh, Mark Steele is controlled opposition because of the overt attempt he makes to not demonstratively prove something. Providing non-falsifiable assertions is a tactic and propaganda. Using a meter that's deliberately picked, if you claim to be an expert, buying a meter that won't tell you where a signal's coming from or even what frequency it is, means you're trying not to find out where a signal's coming from and what frequency it is. That's it. You can even make these things. It's kind of difficult to make them, honestly. But if you claim to be a weapons expert engineer and a radio frequency freak and all that, you can't just go find a ham operator guy to get a Yagi antenna. So let's go on. And by the way, you can use a cell phone's internal antenna. It's a snowflake looking thing. And it, you can use it as a detector and you can also use several of them to frequency differentiate. But let's go on with this. <clears throat> on behalf of Gateshead, Newcastle, North Tyneside, North Northumberland, South Tyneside, Gate County Durham, and Sutherland City Council authorities. Someone related to Mark Steele running a company is listed on a bunch of consultations for it. And Mark Steele's own social media used to show, he, he used social media that would force you not to be able to archive it, so I can't prove it. But there are screenshots and that's all I can say. That he was associated with or liked a bunch of authorities before a specific date, a very specific date, and then smirched it. Smart specialization report was done at one time in these areas. And the company that I'm going to mention was a consultant for it through the Northeast Local Economic Partnership with an endowment or cash from Horizon 2020, a European Union Development Fund active in the area. So you have European Union, Agenda 2020, European style, and an economic partnership between all these areas, economic. I'm going to read the copy from Mark Steele's video, a DVD he used to sell. It's still up. I found the fucking thing. Here we go. Mark Steele, 5G, the existential threat and the opportunity. Opportunity? A weapon system to damage real innovation, business opportunity, and the potential impact on the future economic viability of the West? This was his focal point about 5G, the economic dangers. He was trying to sell himself as an independent consultant, helping people who are paranoid about the effects of yet another Internet 2.0 occurrence. And nobody would buy his shit. The, video, the DVD's up, up for sale for like six bucks. No one buys it. He made a DVD explaining the dangers of 5G for your economy. And when that didn't pan out, you saw what happened. Someone led me to a link, but I just started looking up all of the company names associated with his brother. His brother is named Graham. But he goes under Ben Travis. That's called having an alias. I have an alias too. I use a company name that literally sounds like a human name. It's a three-part name, sounds like a human, and I just don't include LLC or incorporated at the end for a checking account, bank account, uh, business dealings, so that I'm isolated from it. It's a variation on the spelling of my name. There's nothing illegal about it as long as the location that authorized you to have an LLC acknowledges it in the first line. This is an LLC based on this person's name in the first two sentences. So that if someone looks it up, they find out your actual real name and they find out you're the one who started it. You have to be overt, not covert, when you run a business. And in Britain, 
except when sp someone sp spends some good money. Any business you've ever started and taken down is going to be recorded somewhere, and you're going to be recorded on that list. So you better make sure you're not on the list of directors or secretaries or any named people within the business that was considered important. And you better have more than 50 employees if you want to be able to get rid of that data. He didn't. His brother, who's named Graham apparently, goes under the name Ben Travis and uh, was involved in a company or is involved in a company called Review Worldwide. It's actually a company that made rear view heads up display motorcycle helmets. Okay. By the way, that implies that it used RF energy inside of a helmet you wore to communicate with the smartphone. The irony. So anyway, and yeah, he listed that for a while as a business he ran. So he can't claim he didn't run it. But let's see what happened here. His original problem that he was creating so he could solve it and get paid to do it was to be a consultant for companies that wanted to take advantage of 5G. He was marketing himself to businesses that don't tolerate fear-mongering and scaremongering about cancer and, and, and space aliens and the Illuminati. That, that's not going to make him any money. And when he couldn't make money because they didn't take him seriously because he does not have any credentials in this. He's walking around with an orange ball meter and people are like, you're a salesman. Get out. I mean, if I'm running a business and someone's waving around literally what looks like a My Little Pony Magic Wand version of something I have in the back for testing, real RF testing. I've been in an RF testing room. I've been in a lab. I know what the fucking shit looks like. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. I would have looked at him and say, you're a moron. Get the fuck off my property. I'm getting the taser and the mace. Get out. You're an idiot. I'm not buying your consulting. Uh, I've worked as a consultant. I've actually gone to companies. Hey, would you like consultation in Portland, Oregon for hooking up line of sight only telecom at high speed? How would it work? It's a box this big, literally the size of your fist. You aim it out of a window at a specific point with a laser pointer, and then it does line of sight only with a very narrow beam signal to give you a very clean high speed internet connection without having to use a bunch of cabling. But it only worked for one floor because from that box into the building, you wire it or you RF it at a completely different frequency. They didn't want it because at the time it was new technology and they didn't want to use it. We are now dealing with it. You call I call it the cobweb at the time, but it's uh, called a mesh network. And the idea was all of the uh, West Hills in Portland, we were going to get rich people to get high speed internet connections and then find one window with a clear view of everything with nothing in the way, not even a tree, and set up one microwave antenna. It only needed one. Uh, most of the people at the time weren't going to use much bandwidth and then we just add more antennas. It wasn't illegal. Then the city council, council approval, got in on it and uh, it never fucking happened. But they got a lot of uh, dark wire, you know, fiber optic cables that's dead. Uh, I'm at a location that's using some of the dark cabling that's out in the street here. It's cheap now because they put a bunch of infrastructure in instead of just doing line of sight that would work instantly. The person who owns the receiver maintains it. The person who owns the transponder system maintains it. You don't have to do anything as a city except get the fuck out of our face and let us put it up. They wouldn't do it. They literally went out of their way to pass a rule for about four years to prevent us from setting that up. They didn't have any excuses for it. They just said you had to get approval and then they never gave approval. And then they wink and nod to all of the telecom companies to keep the monopoly going. Yes, there's a reason for that story. So uh, me and a bunch of friends set up, or I helped set up, a uh, ad hoc Wi-Fi network up and down 21st, 23rd, Hawthorne, and Belmont by putting in repeaters everywhere and hiding them in trees. Because fuck them. It took them a long time to realize where all of the little boxes were. We just went along and put in two D batteries and every one of them to keep them going. Because fuck them because we wanted internet connections and we wanted them low power. You put them once a block, line of sight. It'll go through a tree at that distance pretty easily. It doesn't hurt anybody. Everybody had free Wi-Fi for about two months. That's a long time when you're fighting city council. Review, R-E-E-V-U, one of many names, worldwide limited company, number such and such, incorporated in 2007. Greenhouse, Greencroft Industrial Park, Stanley County, Durham, yada yada. And also another address you can look below, his brother. 
Nature of Business, Other Research Experimental Development on Natural Sciences and Engineering. They made motorcycle helmets. Previous company name, Sandco, changed that name in 2007. It reincorporated, that's what that means, from being called Sandco to being coming in 2007, review various spellings. Previous company name. Now in debt for 96,000 pounds. Mark Steele's brother's business. It's only two he's had. The other one died. We'll be getting to that in a minute. Debt for 96,000 pounds. It died in 2017. Ten years after being incorporated, the company died financially. All the money vacuumed away. Debts. Hookers blow. Gambling debts. No no idea what happened. So when did Mark Steele pop up like a turd in a punch bowl? See also Repulse Limited. Previous company name for Repulse Limited was Rear, R-E-E-R View Limited in 1999. And Review, same spelling, 2009. Tenon House, Ferryboat Lane, Sunderland, Tyne, and where such and such. Yeah. Changing the company name to get rid of debts repeatedly. The person involved, however, his brother, may have been involved with several dozen companies. Also associated repeatedly with a consulting firm that's strangely not accessible, Sandgate House. Sand, blah, 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 named companies. Uh, Quasi Newcastle upon Tyne, Tyne and Ware. Same company director as for M. Steele's Leisure, Leisure Limited, Newcastle Fencing Company, 1992. I'm not covering the other things that were brought up to my attention by a link. I've archived the link. I'm going to archive all of them. Now, why am I bringing this up? The company his brother runs that his name is not associated with that changed company names and swapped out company business ID codes to avoid debt by changing this company name to another one and then having this one adopt the name so they weren't the same name at the same time with a two-month delay. And used to work with M. Steele's Leisure Limited Fencing Security Company. Fencing, sure. Leisure. The company was a consultant for setting up the fucking 5G. His brother isn't listed as having an expertise in this area. Mark Steele says he is. He worked as a consultant to set up the 5G plan. He benefited from funds from the EU Development Fund called uh, associated with Horizon 2020, Northeast Local Economic Partnership, and he has been caught a couple of times showing supposed court cases against him that don't have proper seals and were never publicly posted. This this country publicly posts shit about LLCs, which is really weird, considering I'm in America and I rely on it not being easily found. They make it really easy to find. And Mark was smart enough to keep his name off of almost everything listed. <laughs> Companies in the UK.co.uk company slash what? There's a search function. Good hunting. It's not whether you find them, it's how many times you find them with lots of companies. And then researching each individual company. But his brother's a little less extreme. 14 companies only so far. One of them associated with Mark. Or, he has to be a consultant. They said, fuck you, you're not qualified. So this is revenge porn. I'm going to repeat his DVD spiel. The existential threat of 5G and the opportunity to be a paid controlled opposition person. Weapon system to damage innovation, business opportunity, economic viability. Nothing about your DNA, nothing about safety and health. It's untested. He's talking about being a cowboy and exploiting it, not killing it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Mark Steele is a shill.